<laughs> All right, welcome to another KM6 LYW radio extravaganza. Hey, if you're into amateur radio, maybe specifically data mode, stick around. We're going to do some cool stuff here. Um, I know you see a cell phone or mobile device if you're in Europe on my screen. We're going to talk about cell phone apps today related to ham radio. A lot of these are data mode stuff. I've got a couple of voice mode things, maybe some useful apps, at least for Android. I know they're out there for iOS uh, that are going to help you uh, get the most out of your amateur radio. We're going to talk about each one of these apps uh, this time on KM6 LYW Radio. <laughs> All right, there it is. I'm still following. I'm following the formula, guys. I don't, you know, I don't make this up. You got to have a little intro, then you got to have some, some fun music, uh, that kind of stuff. I, I don't know. I don't know, guys. All right, so here we are at the studio. I've got a, a cell phone. Actually, it's a what is this? It's a Pixel 3a, just a regular Android cell phone. Um, you can also do this on tablets too, like Android tablets. Um, so I've got it in debug bug mode so we can see my phone uh, on the display here. And I've got a handful of apps. Um, these are the ones that I use quite a bit um, with, uh, in conjunction with the, the DigiPi, which is this uh, Raspberry Pi here. Um, actually, you can see it on the left, uh, how you can get a copy of that. Uh, so this is uh, Raspberry Pi Zero, Zero with a little audio board on top and a little screen. Uh, this thing does every data mode you can think of. I mean, you know, not just APRS and packet. It's kind of like a mobile link D only on steroids. It'll not only do uh, AX.25 and APRS, it'll do, you know, FT8, JS8 call, FL Digi, and it'll do all of that stuff via your phone so you don't need a keyboard or monitor you can do all of those apps all of these modes uh, using nothing more than a wi-fi device uh, maybe more specifically a browser and if you want a handful of these cool apps um, so we're not going to talk about the digipi too much today we are we do have a web browser up here the digipi is in tnc and aprs iGate mode of course you know you can see that from uh the top there, TNC, and we're connected to a Kenwood today, a Kenwood THD74. Um, you know, I only buy used radios. I, I just saw there, some guy was selling this. Uh, God, I wish I could remember your name in case you're watching. I'm um, selling this for, for a few hundred bucks, and so I was able to pick this up. So the DigiPi is connected to the Kenwood D74, and the DigiPi is in TNC and packet mode, as we can see uh, from our web browser on our mobile device. So the first one that I think is the most cool, I just want to start here, um, is APRS Droid. Uh, so this is connected to, or actually when I click on Start Tracking, it's going to connect to the DigiPi over Bluetooth, and you can actually set that up in Preferences, Connection Preferences, and you can say you want to use the Bluetooth serial port protocol and then set your Bluetooth device. In this case, it's a DigiPi 4 is what I'm connected to. That's the I've got multiple DigiPies, as you can imagine. Also, point of interest, you know, if you've got the D74, it also has a Bluetooth interface. And you can connect to the D74 directly. You don't even need a DigiPi. Well, <laughs> if you just want to do APRS and, and AX.25, you can connect directly to the D74 using its Bluetooth KISS interface. And that's that guy. So I'm going to go ahead and connect an APRS Droid. So APRS Droid, I'm going to click on Start Tracking. It's going to connect. You can see the little Bluetooth light light up here. You see the blue LED, the icon lit up. So that means we're connected over Bluetooth using my phone, which you're looking at here. To the, and the DigiPi is connected to the D74. So, you know, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with APRS Droid. I know a lot of people think, oh, it's just for position reports, and you can watch people go back and forth to work. Um, you know, and it's, you know, you can do that. And here's some other guys. ki 6 Hey, Tim. How you doing, Tim? I don't know if you're watching, but I can see you uh, just west of Placerville. Um, and this is me here uh, on this map. And you, so this is just part of what DigiPi or what APRS Droid can do. So we can go back. We can actually send our position. You'll see this stuff transmit over here, and you see we our pack our position packet got repeated by uh, G Town. Um, so we sent our position out. But what the coolest part about APRS isn't the positioning. That's not it at all. And that's what people focus on. You can click on the messaging interface, and you can talk to other ham amateur radio operators that have uh, APRS enabled on their radios. Um, you know, a lot of radios do. This one does an FT1 DR. Um, the Kenwood does. You know, the Yasus do. Strangely, the ICOMS does not 
do APRS. They just don't. Of course, if you have an ICOM radio and you connect up a DigiPi, not only do you get APRS, uh, but you get all other data modes um, available to you via, via your uh, your cell phone device or, or tablet or Wi-Fi device. All right, so you can you can send messages to other radios, and that's cool. But a lot there's a lot of virtual radios out there, like SMS GTE. You can send SMS texts. Text. So so at some point, the virtual radios are running on the internet, and they're bridging your APRS network to the internet, and you can interact with them. Like I know some of you, uh, you can say send message to. You probably guys know this one called WX Bot, and nine. You put you send them your zip code or something. There's a lot of other options. And I can send a, a radio called WXBot, a message of 95747, which is my zip or postal code. I can say OK. And it's going to respond, as you might guess, with the weather. Um, so this should be sending and receiving here. You can see it's uh, on 144390. That is our uh, packet frequency, APRS packet frequency here in the United States. And in Europe, it's going to be 144.8. And you can see we just got the message back from WX Bot, a virtual radio on the Internet, uh, that I am two miles west northwest of Roseville, California. And today it's going to be sunny with a high of 67. So that's APRS in a nutshell. It does positioning and messaging. Um, for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and close this. So that's APRS Droid. It's got to be one of my favorite. It really makes the DigiPi shine or even just the Kenwood by itself. You can connect to it over Bluetooth, which is totally cool. All right, so that's APRS Droid. I'm going to stop tracking so it doesn't get confusing. So the next app on the list is going to be email related. Yes, we can send and receive email over packet radio here. So I'm going to start up an app called Woad. Woad. I've heard it pronounced Woad and Woad on two different things. So go to woad.sumustld.com. S-U-M-U-S-T-L-T-D.com. Hopefully you can read that. And get the Woad APK file. I think you can get this on Google Play as well. Um, I should have mentioned the APRS Droid. You can get this at their website for free, unsigned. Or you can go to Google Play and get APRS Droid. And, and Woad, I think, is, is the same thing. It's got a website and a Google Play instance. Um, so this is Woad. Uh, Woad's awkward for me. I mean, they tried to do the inbox, outbox thing, right? So you've got your inbox with the, you know, your email and your outbox, which is cool. Um, but, you know, honestly, if I had to choose, I'd probably use Pat. Maybe it's just because of what I know. Pat's already built into the DigiPie, and it's, a, you know, more of a web-based thing. But this is an Android app if you want to use it. And this will connect to the DigiPie either via Bluetooth or TCP IP using the, the KISS interface. Um, so actually, you can go into... Uh, well, what's interesting about this is they have something called sessions. So you go into sessions and you set up all of your connections here. In fact, I need to switch to a, uh, a frequency that has WinLink uh, uh, servers on it. So, I'm gonna, so in this case, I'm going to switch to 144730. Um, that is a WinLink frequency here in California. And I'm gonna, there's a K6SOL for Solano County. And he's going to go through a Digipeter that's on the other side of California. And so what, what I do is I click on this. And this is the information about it. And then I click play, which means connect. So I'm connecting via Woad. And this thing should start uh, transmitting and receiving. And we're going to see uh, not only my call sign, but K6SOL's packets coming through here. Uh, you're going to see stuff in the log file. Um, not a lot of re human readable information, but you can see the connection information, the WinLink in info. Uh, you know, this, I think this works a little better on a tablet. Maybe if you use this on a tablet aspect, you know, this would make more sense. Um, but it is sending and receiving email right now while the session is playing. Um, again, let's go to sessions. Go back. And you'll see that this session is running, and it says it's receiving messages. So if I go over to my inbox... Um, you see, this is the message I've received, and I should be receiving another message right now, if I remember. I sent myself a message just so you guys can see this uh, <laughs> doing something cool. It's receiving, and sure enough, up here at the top, here's a new message. I click on that, and it says, uh, you've got mail. So this came from the Internet and uh, was came through the WinLink network, which is via the Internet, and then that connected to a WinLink radio node, a CMS node. <laughs> I know this is complicated. And then it was transferred over RF to the my Kenwood, and then uh, went through to the KISS TNC on this Raspberry Pi, and ultimately back to my, my cell phone here and using the Woad app. <sighs> I know that's a mouthful, but it's totally cool, right? You can do email from anywhere in the world. If you're on HF, um, you know, you could use HF as well. But uh, that is Woad.
Um, let's see, the next one we have isn't really a data mode. This is more of a voice mode. All right, and this is called Echo Link. Now, this is an oldie. You guys probably know this one. You could tell me all about Echo Link. So when I click on Echo Link and I can actually connect to a repeater and talk on the repeater, you know, I can get on my phone and just talk on the repeater using Echo Link. Of course, I need to be connected to the internet here. Um, so I don't know, we can search for one. Here's a W6EK is our club repeater. I click on that, say connect. I mean, you can hear it. We usually have a net, net going on in the morning. So we've got an active repeater. I'm sure you can hear that. I'm going to go ahead and turn it down. But you can see we've got a bunch of all-star nodes connected to this. This is running ham VoIP on the repeater on, on my Raspberry Pi there at the, at the, uh, at the vault. So that's Echolink. And I can click on Transmit down here when I'm, we're not receiving something. And it, it, whoever's on the repeater will hear me talking on my cell phone or mobile device that you're looking at right here. Uh, Echo Link's totally cool. Uh, like if maybe you got people with, you're jealous because there's people who have clear nodes, you know, and they're able to communicate that way. Well, it's, it's a lot the same. Uh, Echo Link. Um, this is an older one, so I'm actually going to hit end here to disconnect. Echo Link, totally cool. Um, we've also got something called DV Switch. This is another app. I don't think I have a link to this. I believe this is on Google Play as well. My DV Switch works a, almost exactly like Echo Link, but I think the quality is a lot better. This is an actual voice over IP app, so you can use it for, you know, uh, I don't know, whatever your voice over IP carrier is. You know, DV Switch will work with that as well. And uh, of course, you can go into config. I've got uh, actually I'm going to accounts. You can see we've got our club repeater configured here. This is all the info. This connects to uh, Ham VoIP. Uh, and usually we have a password on this one. I don't know what we just do. You always have to turn your transmit level down to or it overdrives real bad. That's just kind of a, a gotcha. And the protocol is IAX2. And this will connect to uh, your all-star nodes on your repeaters if you have one. Uh, if you have one configured uh, for for so people can dial in using IAX uh, or, or uh, VoIP protocols. So in this case, I just click connect. Let me turn it up. And this is the all-star node that it's announcing. And these are all the all-star nodes that are connected. And of course, there's people on the repeater here. So I can't really demonstrate a transmission, but I'll go ahead and turn that down. Now, if I wanted to talk, I could just press push to talk down here and everyone hear me on the repeater. And I, I do think the, the audio quality on DV Switch is a lot better than Echo Link. Um, and you can change that all on the all-star node. So that is DV Switch, DV Switch for Android. And I say cancel. Actually, I want to hang up. Kill this session. All right, it's hung up. And then I go down here. Say, yeah, I want to exit DV switch. So that is DV switch. Uh, the last one, well, not almost the last one, is Robot 36. I'm a real slow scan television fan. So we've got Robot 36. And you can actually send and receive images over the radio you can it's usually done over hf on 14.230 you'll see that there and what i can do is actually uh, it'll just use your phone's microphone and it's listening listening for a slow scan television signal right now um robot 36 isn't connected to anything but but what i do a lot of times is i'll take my phone <laughs> i know this is this is silly but uh, take your phone and hold it up to your speaker mic and it actually works if you can believe that you can send and receive i've done that oops you know, I should have done it landscape for Wode. I think Wode likes a, a landscape better. So what I, what I can do is kind of simulate this. I don't have an HF radio here on hand, uh, but I can. You can actually go to YouTube and they have examples of like test images. And I'm going to hit play on this. And you'll notice while it's playing this SSTV test image on YouTube. I'm going to turn this up just a little bit so I can hear it. Move the phone a little bit closer. And hopefully that's not too annoying, but we've got an image coming down. So, so Robot 32, the Android app, is actually decoding what it's hearing through my PC speakers through the cell, cell phone's microphone. Now, what I would typically do is just put my cell phone right on top of my radio. I, I'm going to talk a little more quiet because you can actually see my voice on there. You can just put your cell phone right on top of your HF radio and it will decode uh, what your HF radio is hearing. And likewise, when you want to transmit an image, you just hold your cell phone up to your speaker mic and it'll transmit. So hey, I'm going to pause real quick so we, uh, so we don't have to wait for this whole thing and then we'll see what the image we got uh, via YouTube, <laughs> via the uh, Robot 32, uh, 36 app. <laughs> All right, so that was a complete image. We got Rick rolled, so that was Rick. I forget his last name. Anyways, picture of Rick. We got Rick rolled uh, via YouTube. Um, 
Hopefully this isn't getting too cut off. I'll move this back over here. Rick rolled on slow scan television using the Robot 30. Let me pause that. Using the Robot 36 app for slow scan television. Okay, lastly, this isn't a digital mode or voice mode or anything. There's Repeater Book. You guys all know Repeater Book. Um, you can, it will use your phone's location and just find nearby repeaters. Totally cool. A great app to have. I, I don't know if there's an iOS version of this, but these are, in fact, the uh, the repeaters that we connect to. In fact, here's the club repeater right here that we just connected to using uh, uh, Woad, or I'm sorry, uh, Echolink and DV Switch. All right, so I want to get rid of these guys. So these are apps for Android that uh, help you with amateur radio. Um, maybe there's more. I, I'm not really a phone guy. In fact, I don't even use cellular telephone services. This doesn't even have a SIM card. In fact, you'll know it's an air, notice it's in airplane mode. I just use it as a Wi-Fi device. Um, you know, I can still make telephone calls from it, just not through cell phone networks. I just, I don't know, because I just don't trust them. And I also call this like my my two centimeter radio, right? Uh, because that's what it is. You know, everyone gives you a hard time. Hey, Craig, why are you carrying around that silly radio? You know, and I, you know, I say, well, well, you know, you're carrying around a radio too. It's just different frequency, anyways. <laughs> um, last but not least, patrons, awesome. Thank you guys. It's just overwhelming. I'm speaking. See, I'm speechless. I have, I, I can't believe how much support we have on patreoncom slash km 6 lywradio If you like these videos, if you want early access to software from km 6 lywradio including that DigiPi software image over here, um, go ahead and throw something in the Patreon account. I really appreciate it. it helps with a, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these experiments. You guys have all kinds of different radios. It really helps offset the cost of buying all these radios and uh, testing them out. Uh, so you guys don't have to. So Fu, Brian, Jake, Jason, Dan, Christopher, and Simon, uh, William, thank you guys. You guys, I think this is an order of who's been with me the longest. I know you guys have been supporting me since the very beginning. Gosh, I really, really appreciate it. You have no idea. Carlton, Mark, Kevin, Drew, just going through here. Uh, Jeff Hotchberg, wow, can't thank you enough. And you're like our minister of documentation and promotion and, you know, get really getting the word out about reimagining digital modes in amateur, in a modern world on amateur radio. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, Eddie, Aaron, Bradley, William, uh, Fallen Yoda. You know, if you have a weird name, I'm probably going to call it <laughs> Fallen Yoda. Where do you get that? You tell me where you get that name. We got Rick, Matthew, Mark, <laughs> Jerry, Tom Steiner, uh, Ilya Glotov. Uh, let me, I don't know how to play, pronounce that. This is, that's an interesting name. Um, Ian Justice, uh, Howard, uh, David, Dusty, Dana, Aaron, Christian, Wayne, John, Steve, Scott, Peter Gleason, Gordon, Slimy Green. See, there's another good one. And we got Paul, Thomas, Jason, Shad, Andrew. It just keeps going. It's unbelievable. Uh, I can't, can't believe this. Tyler, uh, Lyon, thank you. Uh, or Leon, if you're like the city in France. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, like and subscribe. We've got over a thousand subscribers now. This is unbelievable. Um, I, yeah, it really is unbelievable. Uh, I appreciate all the help here on patreon.com slash km6lyw radio. All right, like and subscribe. Leave some comments below. Maybe there's some apps that you're interested in. I know I would like to see them. Um, I really would like to get in, people more into using amateur radio, uh, digital modes, really using nothing more than, than your cell phone. You know, maybe it's keyboard to keyboard. I, you know, I don't care what mode it is. Um, you know, just to make this more accessible, uh, especially, especially to the younger generation, right? That's all they have is their, their cell phones or mobile devices. So the, the more we can integrate amateur radio and what they already know, I think the better off we'll all be. All right, this is KM6LYW Radio, Craig in California, and uh, <laughs> I'm clear. <laughs>